What is going on guys, it's the Ecom Boss and in today's video I brought you guys a free dropshipping course on Facebook ads, influencer marketing, Shopify dropshipping in general. So we're going to talk about the apps you should use, how to avoid bans, how to scale your store, how to start your store. We're going to go over all of it and it's going to be hours of content. So if you like this video, make sure you smash the thumbs up and that you subscribe. And if you need any more help, you can message me on Instagram here because I currently have two more spots left in the coaching. Let's get straight into this. All right guys, we're in the free dropshipping training. If you guys see the camera up in the right corner, I am obviously looking at my PC right Right in front of me here so don't think i'm anti-social the first slide here guys what will i go over and it's going to be a lot trust me guys just drop the courses you don't have to buy a course ever after watching this i got you guys okay how to increase profits free winning products yes guys you heard me right i will be giving away a couple of free winning products because i think you guys deserve it and you guys have been the best supporters of me so yes i will give away some free winning products later in this presentation shopify apps that sells and apps that just makes your life easier in general facebook ads in depth obviously i got you guys in the Facebook strategies, the testing strategies, the scaling strategies, everything you guys need on Facebook and also when it comes to ad account bans, content, video ads, picture ads, descriptions. I'm also going to be talking about store design setup. I will show you guys examples of good stores too. Product research, my exact product research strategy that I've been using to produce a lot of money with dropshipping. I'm also doing a case study later on in this training, which is going to be about my 70% profit margin skincare product that I had in January last year. Screenshot here. Why the average dropshipper fail? And I know that you guys love the mindset of a successful dropshipper video that I posted a year ago. So I got you guys also talked about mindset later on in this PowerPoint. How dropshipping wrongly can affect you. Trust me guys, I have people being sued. I have people owing a lot of money to the government that I know. Don't get into that situation. I'm going to teach you guys how to avoid it because it could be bad as well, right? How not to dropship. Actually, super important topic because I know a couple of you guys might dropship wrongly and much more crazy value in this video. So if that sounds good, press the thumbs up. Let's get into it, guys. A few things to think about before you guys start your dropshipping journey. One thing I want to tell you guys before we get into it now is that if you know some of these things you could just skip to the next section right if you're a little bit advanced you can just skip to the next part of this presentation you don't have to sit and watch the whole thing if you're early on i do recommend you to watch the whole thing i recommend everyone to watch the whole thing but i'm just saying guys if something is a little boring for you you can skip to the next one but i don't think this is going to be boring whatsoever and i need to get myself a microphone stand the budget guys is super important okay that's the first thing here i would have a thousand dollars or more to be honest if not you should go the influencer route but just to knock that out, you should have that are you lazy that's the thing to think about before you start out because if you're lazy are you going to make it work is this business for you or should you get into another business probably has a lot to do with budget i don't know but just think about this before you get started i recommend dropshipping it's a crazy business super good way to get rich in the beginning how will your store look this is something you should know before you make it but you should not let this delay your store building and how will you stand out how you will stand out is actually super important so store design the beginning of the presentation simple and clean wins listen guys you always want to have your store simple clean i see no point in having a super advanced store because because honestly, it's just going to be spammy or it's going to be too good that it could actually just look scammy. So I usually keep my stores clean, okay? Don't look like a dropshipping store because guys, listen to this. If you just run a general Brooklyn store, the chances are somebody that's going to buy from you has been scammed from a store with a similar layout before, a similar design before. Because so many dropshipping stores look like this store, right? So if I've ever been scammed by a store that kind of looks like your store, that will make the trust go down. So you don't want to look like a dropshipper because if you look like a dropshipper, that might be a bad indicator for other people so just don't look like a dropshipper general store is the way i gotta say guys you should have a general store you should have like three to four categories that could be you know phone cases healthcare skincare and home decor that's just for an example but general stores is the way it allows you to test products way easier if you were to run a one product store when you test a product you would have to just redo the store all the time and usually i see people in the early stages running a one product store they usually just fail way quicker or they give up or they don't dropship consistently because they have to redo a lot of the stores i recommend you guys to just do your general store because they really do convert and they make a lot of profit so why not just go for it it makes it easier for you as well i run general stores don't spend weeks making your store i've been working with some people who spends weeks on making a store but there really isn't a point don't make up too many excuses on it just start make your store in like two hours and then just get straight into it when it comes to the product research breaking down the store live on screen as i promised you guys i will be breaking down the store so i am going to do it you guys also need to get your payment providers right listen up guys you want to use stripe and paypal or you want to use shopify payments and paypal this is totally up to you but i do recommend you guys to use paypal and a lot of people will say like, I'm not going to use PayPal, but listen up guys, 60% of sales could come from PayPal, 40% of sales could come from PayPal, I've seen 90% of sales come through PayPal. And listen up guys, in the early stages, sales are data. The only thing you need in order to make more money is data, sales that optimize your ad account and just makes it easier to scale. So that's why you should have PayPal. And if you really don't want to 
use PayPal, at least use PayPal in the early testing phase. Because when you test a product, it's already hard to succeed a test. So if your test is going to be successful, you should at least have PayPal. So you make a couple of more sales. Shipping setup, you guys want to set up the back end of your store. I want you guys to set up free shipping and express shipping. The reason you want to have express shipping is because if you have express shipping, you can upsell the shipping, right? So if you're free shipping, just as an example, is AliExpress standard shipping is the free one or e-packet is the quicker shipping like the express shipping. You charge $5 for the e-packet shipping while you actually just buy it for $2. You now profit $3 extra. So I do recommend you guys to set up free shipping and express shipping. Obviously later on, you want to get in touch with an agent to get sh quicker shipping times, but I will get into that later on in this presentation. So these are the apps that you guys need when you dropship. Okay, next slide here. The apps needed for dropshipping. Number one is Overload. Really obvious because that's where you're going to import your product from. You never want to do your product research on Overload. You want to do your product research on AliExpress and then bring the price from AliExpress into Overlow or you put it on your store. So that is app number one, Overlow. Number two, Luke's Reviews. This app is super good because you want to build trust with your customer. So I've been buying a lot of clothes in my life as most people probably have, right? And I've been seeing that the bigger brands, they also have reviews. Like there's no such thing as being too big to have reviews, even though I know some people don't have it either. I'm just saying there's nothing awkward about having reviews. Like they're big brands using reviews. And the reason to have reviews is just the fact that it builds trust. You want to build a trust with customer. You want to sell to a customer that trusts you. You're right, the trust factor is everything. Because keeping in mind, guys, the people that come to you are cold interest, right? These are cold customers, and why should they even buy from you in the first place? I mean, your Facebook ad just showed up in their face. They're now going to buy a product from you, but they're super cold. At least if you're in the early stages. So if you're not having any trust factor on your website, how will you convert a super cold audience? Eventually, later, you don't have to have Luke's reviews necessarily because you have warmer audience. But why would you not have it, right? So Luke's reviews is just to build that trust. It's just to help the cold audience to purchase from you just make it seem like trust and just being a part of other people who's already shopped there before you guys get the rest of the point i'm not going to talk more about it but you guys know you need to build trust currency converter plus guys super important app unless you're selling to one country only if you're just selling to the united states you can obviously just use us dollars but if you're selling to more than one country or to different currencies in general the top five countries or worldwide you need to have the currency converter plus app because listen most of the people that knows different currencies are like business people bankers or i mean i'm sure there are a lot of other people who knows currencies too but you guys need to assume that your customer doesn't know a currency, right? And a cold customer will most likely not go on Google and search like US dollar currency to their currency. They will just leave the website. So use the currency converter plus just to make it simple for your customer to see the price on it and just feel confident when they buy. Because you never want to distract the customer, right? This is my number one tip. Never ever distract the customer. If they get distracted, they're already cold. They might just disappear from your website. So make it easy for them, guys. And there is nothing weird about having a currency converter plus. So with Luke's if you currency converter plus you're probably spending like twenty dollars a month but these have free trials this is money that you will make back if you put in the work sipify sweet upsell any good upsell apps in general is absolutely recommended with a good upsell app you can increase your profit margins by 30 percent so let's just say that i sell this phone iphone for 30 dollars sounds really weird because you will buy an iphone for 30 dollars but you guys get the example i'm selling this phone for 30 dollars well i'm selling this phone for 30 dollars and then the insurance on the phone is 10 dollars would you take the insurance probably you would so when i bought my mac down here it costed yes really expensive three thousand dollars not worth it whatsoever just to make that clear three thousand dollars when i was going to buy it they upsell me on insurance for another three hundred dollars so that's now the upsell boosted their profit margin so if you sell an iphone you could upsell them on the charger right the iphone cost 20 the charger cost five you now made five dollars in the upsell you could also upsell on the quicker shipping and this is just a genius way for you guys to have higher profit margin but never use upsells early on in the testing phase early stages of your business bring us back to the customer being cold you never want to distract them right never make it complicated never distract them just make the sale install the upsell apps later consistent cart super good app to retarget people people that's been on your web page before probably left something in their cart didn't buy like let's just say someone almost checked out they put the product in the cart they didn't buy it why did the customer not buy the product when he already had it in his cart well what you can do about it is to come back to the customer with different offers you could set this thing up and customize it the exact way you want it to be and then send out messages such as like hey we noticed that your card got a balance six hours ago we're now offering you a 20 percent coupon code to come back to the store and buy it and just send out those messages like six hours later 24 hours later a week later just to get the customer to come back because if you have an offer a reason for them to come back you can recover a lot of cards same with sms bump it's the exact same app just for the people that put in their phone number in the checkout instead of their email so you should have that to retarget people that put in their phone number instead of email super smart as well no spammy apps guys you never want to make your store look spammy what whatsoever spin the wheel apps such as you know like somebody in the u.s just looked at this product like 10 people are looking at this somebody there just bought
off this product. No, you never want to have anything spammy, guys. It's obviously too good to be true. People are not going to trust it. So just avoid these apps. These are all the apps you need. All right, guys, in this section, I want to teach you guys how I find $100,000 winning products over and over again. The cool thing about dropshipping is you can have repeatedly success with it if you know what you're doing. So I'm going to show you guys a live AliExpress breakdown. Talk about how I price my products, how they make a margin, products to avoid way more. Let's get straight into it. So as you guys know, if you look at the screen right now, my strategy is to go to the AliExpress section. I've talked about this many times before, but this is a big course, so I'm going to go over all of it. Okay, guys, so you see when you go to AliExpress, you can go down to the homepage. On the homepage, there is a section called More to Love if you scroll down to the bottom. On More to Love, I've been finding a lot of good winning products, just like this one, for example. This is a pretty good product. It's a label maker. It's saturated at this point, but I think it could work really well uh, back in the days. But More to Love is where I've been finding a lot of good products. There's obviously way more to this strategy than just the More to Love section. We, for example, got a clogger if you like clog your sink. There's just a lot of good products in More to Love in general. So I do recommend you guys when you're doing your product research to set up a document. I always do this. I always teach my students to do this. Set up a product research document and then find like 20 products. At the end of the day, choose five of those 20 products and say, I'm going to run them. Then be even more strict and choose three of them and run those products. But always set up a document so that you can compare products, research the products. You can, for example, search up the product on Facebook, right? So if I wanted to see the competitors on this label maker that we got right here, like let's just say I wanted to run it. This is the label maker. I would go on Facebook and let's just say you're searching up your high school crush. You will go to Facebook in the left corner and search up her name and search up the name. What I would do here is I would just take label maker as a name and search up label maker on Facebook. Once I've searched label maker on Facebook, I will hit videos and then the videos will direct me to a competitor's store. Then I'll be able to just click the links and get into the store. So that is how I find my competitors. But honestly, guys, it all comes down to the more to love section. I keep scrolling here. The thing about more to love is it optimized towards what you click on. So if you click on a lot of healthcare products like acne products, let's just say, let's just say I click on a lot of acne products and blackhead removers, I will start seeing more blackhead removers and acne removers. If I click on a lot of dog products, I will get more dog products. And that is why more to love is so good because look at it like this. If I click on a lot of high converting problem solving products or wow factor products, it will show me even more wow factor products. So more to love is a place that I could be scrolling and I will be scrolling there for a long time. Besides that, I got categories. My top five niches or honestly the only niches I'm in is home improvement, home and garden, healthcare, skincare, and sports and outdoors. These are the five best niches. You could also score well in jewelry, but these are my favorite niches. So what I usually do, guys, just look at it. I will go into the best match section and keep in mind, I have two strategies. More to love is the second one. I go into the best match section, sort of the price by $7 to 70, and then I will scroll down and see if I can find a product. Let's just say for pricing, how do you price a product? So listen, guys, there's a lot of scenarios and sometimes you guys need to keep in mind that not every product can be priced. But what I'm trying to say is some products aren't even worth a double, right? A lot of times people have been showing me products worth like $2 in AliExpress, just like a sealer, for example. And I say like, yeah, the product is pretty cool, but it doesn't have any value. Some products are only worth $2. It's only worth the Ali price. So you can't really increase the price on a product. While some products you could 5X and 10X, but usually you would like to buy it for like $20 and sell for 49, like 25 becomes 49, $7, sell for 20 or 32 $10 sell for 35 pricing is a really obvious thing but I would just do that and also look at your competitors another strategy I use to product research is by going to the Facebook feed and scrolling the Facebook feed if you scroll a Facebook feed and you've been drop shipping for some time you will understand sort of like how a drop shipping product looks so I usually just scroll the feed on Facebook it kind of acts like more to love the more you click on the more you get of it so just scroll Facebook see how the competitors are doing see how many people are selling it and if you see a product on the feed that looks pretty good note the product down See that, let, let's just say the product, for example, has 100,000 views today. Just note it down. Let's just say you found a label maker on Facebook. Note it down. Today it has 100,000 views and 5,000 likes. Check it the next day. If the next day it has 300,000 views and 10,000 likes, the product just double. This most likely means that someone is scaling it, right? Because you save the product so that you can see how your competitor's product is doing the next day. You just see, oh, the product just blew up. Now it went from three people selling it to 10 people selling it. It's your time to get on it. I usually get on a product when like three people are selling it. But if you want to catch a trend, Facebook is the best way to catch a trend. But if you want to just reinvent the wheel or just do the strategy I usually do, I'll just go by AliExpress research. Should you run saturated products? Obviously not. Products to avoid, guys, is the next section here. I have to tell you guys about this. Humidifiers, everything that has to do with the air, dog products, projectors, cameras, most of electronics in general. Beauty, I'm not talking healthcare, not talking skincare, I'm just talking beauty in general. It could be bad. And keep in mind, guys, there's going to be some people in the comment section who's had success in these niches, and that is totally, totally possible, of course. But I usually don't don't do them. Baby niche, pet niche, those, those are just some, but just avoid them, okay? I already told you guys how to catch the trend early, so I'm uh, not really talking too much about
about that. How do you beat your competitor, you guys may ask? And I say here, stand out. First of all, find your competitor, right? As I told you guys earlier, I told you guys how to find a competitor. Then what you need to do, if your competitor is running, for example, let's just say the label product with AliExpress pictures as the ad and he doesn't have a video ad, you're most likely standing out just by getting a video ad on his product. But if he's having a video ad, how can you stand out? Well, use different content, get custom made content, get better content, get like two dimensional content. I don't know, you can bet there's a lot of things that you guys can do. Make the description clean, price it a little bit lower than your competitor. It's a bunch of ways to stand out, but usually it all comes down to the content. So if you're attempting to sell a saturated product, get custom made content, get better content, and also target Facebook interests that your competitor is most likely not targeting. If he's selling a dog product, he's probably not targeting fish. So you could target fish. I know that's a weird example, but it's true. All right, guys, so I just scroll Facebook and I find a Galaxy Co. If I want to steal this product, I just click on shop now and let's see what pops off. Obviously, it's super slow because I don't know, the Wi-Fi is super slow. This place costs a lot. It's a penthouse in Las Vegas, but still the Wi-Fi is super bad. I don't get it. All right, guys, so as I said, I found the product on Facebook. Now I'll attempt to steal this product. So the Galaxy Co. projector, first of all, is selling it for almost $80, which I do not think is worth. So first thing I would do is to price it lower. I would also have a green add to cart button. Honestly, there's not really a way to steal this, to be honest with you the only thing you can do is to steal the audience because his store is already really good this is a super good store a super good description so the way i would go about stealing the product or taking over it is i would just share the product but go for a different audience so i'll take this saturated product that he's running successfully and put it into an untapped market let's just say that he's only selling to the us i would sell to the top five i would sell to worldwide that helps me stand out that helps me steal his product because if he's only targeting one country and i target the whole world i will get all the worldwide sales that he's missing out on by just going to the top five or to one country. Then I would try to target other interests that I think he would never use. Say selling a projector, he probably targets like Netflix, movies, projectors, like, you know, cuddling, bedtime stories. Well, if he targets all of that, which is obvious, I would try to target something else. I would go for some more random interest or think outside the box. So interest is really the only way to take the product from him or to target another audience, you know, like another country, for example, which are things you will never know. You will never know for sure if he's targeting another country. And also guys, never be fooled. They could have super high engagement, but still not make money because they could just run engagement ads to cheap countries and cheap traffic and so never get fooled by the numbers but obviously if it increases a lot it could mean something so there are a couple of products that you guys need to be careful of okay one of my students he was selling a laser type product and laser is actually not allowed in every single country he was selling a laser product of a type of laser that specifically was not allowed in the country i think he was at least laser he lost eighty thousand dollars he got in legal trouble everything happened it was just super super bad i don't know too much about this story but i'm just saying he had to refund eighty thousand dollars which was all his money he lost a lot of money. I think it went $20,000 negative because keep in mind he refunded all this revenue and just imagine how much he spent to make that revenue too because he was selling it on the edge type of product. So that could be a problem. You'd never want to get into legal issues. The next thing is copyrights. Like you couldn't sell a Marvel product, for example, or a Mongus pillow. If you sell a Mongus pillow, like the game or a Marvel pillow, that is copyright. Just don't sell it. You will get in big trouble if someone finds out and they will find out if you make a lot. Be careful with products that Facebook don't like, okay? That could be skincare products that's on the edge just never try to push the Facebook system. Facebook has been getting way stricter now. It's always been super strict, but now Facebook is really strict. Like you get banned for nothing, but the easiest way to not get banned is by having a verified business manager to begin with to follow their policies. But keep in mind guys, Facebook, when they ban your product, it's a system banning it, right? The system is judging. There is not a person that sits there and judge and the system will usually see things that doesn't happen. That's why you might get banned for, you know, like violence when it obviously doesn't have anything to do with violence. So I recommend you guys don't sell any risky products on Facebook that plays on skin for example skincare products be super careful with because of facebook and honestly because of over promising too or allergic reactions or just over never sell anything that's over promising healthcare the same thing over promising or just you know not solving the problem arriving broken could be a problem or just the fact that healthcare is an over promising niche as i said i'm said over promising a lot there but just super hard niche to deal with sometimes healthcare is the best niche and the worst niche at the same time so how do you set up good product pages let me show you guys an example of a screen right there on how one of my product pages looks it usually has a paragraph and then a picture as you see when i scroll down we start with one paragraph just use the text the introduction then a picture paragraph picture paragraph picture and just repeating that cycle until we're at the bottom so we could start off with just introducing the product then we get the next paragraph we get into the features and then we get into the security for example like making them feel safe to buy it keep the description short and clean the projector we looked at honestly i think it was a pretty good description maybe a little bit short then put in the features as i said safety build the trust you can do that by having reviews as it said further down here key features shipping always let them know the shipping yes it might be scary to say but let them know the shipping that builds trust with them and then the return policies when can they return 
product do they have a 30 or day risk free purchase i don't know that's up to you look at my example to understand good pages just is honestly just what i said here. and that page is a really good one it's been making 5k a day obviously it could be making way more with a better product but still it is pretty good results then when should you use gem pages honestly i just use gem pages in like healthcare and skincare to be honest with you that's where i usually use it or if i'm trying to brand something but you don't really need to use gem pages they can be good i always split test them that's what i recommend like try a gem page later in the scaling phase if it works just try a gem page to see if it works but just split test them but i'm not really too much into them but obviously they're cool they can help you facebook ads entry you're going to start facebook ads at this point so you will have to set up your facebook pixel the pixel setup has been a little bit different now you need to set it up inside of shopify connect it with your shopify account connect it with your facebook account that is totally fine just do it in shopify settings under online store and preferences always run both facebook and instagram the thing is facebook bought instagram for around a billion dollars i'm pretty sure it was a billion dollars or two billion so that means if you're advertising on facebook you're most likely advertising on instagram too so i'm just saying always run a facebook and instagram feeds only my opinion the feeds is where you grab people's attention swipe up stories more like you know swipe up to join my course or something which is not something you guys are selling so i would honestly just go with feeds or just go with you know all the placements automatic it, it usually works too but the feeds is what i've had most success with optimize for sales and make a website easy to purchase on the listen guys the thing is there's not really a point of optimizing for stuff such as engagement because the social proof isn't really important at this point you will get social proof by running conversion ads that's the thing when i'm running ads for purchase people will still click like and engage so the engagement would naturally just go up just by running a conversion ad. And the thing is, what do you want? You want purchases. So why not just optimize for purchase? Set up your Facebook and Instagram pages. Social proof is not needed, as I said. But you want to run your ads on both Facebook and Instagram. So set up the pages there, get a logo, and that's about it until you're ready to run the ads. Where should you guys get content? Honestly, there's a link in the description of where I get my content. You could order videos there. But there's a lot of services that gives you guys videos like bands of ads, viral e commands. There's a lot of pages like that. In the description, it's linked to one I use. I've had the best results with them with super high click rate so you guys can use that but honestly just use whatever you want but if you guys want content you could use that should you use video ads or picture ads and guys honestly in my opinion it's always worth it to split test with a video right why would you not try a video so that means you're going to spend a little bit of extra money on a video but the thing is would you rather spend 30 dollars extra on a video and increase your chances 50 percent than when it's already hard or would you just use pictures usually though pictures has been a lot of success for me like i've seen like i've seen pictures have way way more sales than a video but it depends like some products are picture products some are video product if i'm in skincare for example it's usually a niche that depends on the video so most likely if you're in skincare i do recommend you guys to have a video while if you're in the home niche you could just work with a picture in some cases it depends on the product but i suggest you guys to always split test both always go for the picture and always go for a video in this section, I want to teach you guys how I test product. So the first thing I do is I think I mentioned a little bit earlier here in this presentation, at least I was talking about the top fives or worldwide. I test products on Facebook. You could also use Google ads, but Google ads is nothing that I really teach. I'm a little bit into it, but I'm not going to pretend like I am a Google ad expert. So Facebook, Facebook is the way to go. Facebook is a really good platform to get high returns. Like I'm talking, you know, ROAS is up to 40, 60, just more ROAS means return on your ad spend. I hope you're a little bit familiar with Facebook ads if not you should probably watch some other videos on it I got some Facebook ad videos but if you are a little bit familiar with Facebook ads listen to what I got to say here and if you're not I am sorry but then you should look a little bit more into it and then go back to this page because I'm going to explain from a tiny bit advanced point honestly this is super beginner but if you're more beginner you know what I mean so start off just running worldwide you want your ads to run worldwide you want to you know run it to all the countries in Europe you want to run it to countries in Europe the US Canada just worldwide in general and I usually run seven ad sets these ad sets will be running at ten dollars a day if you run a five dollar ad set just to stop that discussion because we have been talking about five dollar ad sets a lot in the past if you're running a five dollar ad set chances are you're going to fail just being honest because my testing strategy evolves heavily around getting three sales in one ad set and listen if you're selling a product for 49 dollars let's just say 50 to make it simple you're selling it for 50 and you're spending five dollars a day to make three sales for 50 dollars it's probably not going to happen especially not of a cold audience so that's why i'm saying like test with 10 dollar ad sets whoever says five dollar ad sets work is a little bit in the past to be honest let's just run 10 dollar ad sets so it's seven ad sets they're running at 10 dollar a day and it's instagram and facebook feed only as i said you can do automatic play 
placement. You can do other places on Facebook too, but I usually do Instagram and Facebook feed. I find that to be the best. And then I use two to four creatives. That means I will use three pictures in one video. I could use one video and one picture, two pictures in one video. But the point is just use a video and a couple of pictures, unless it really is a picture product. Because the thing is guys, like if you only were to test with one video and it didn't make a sale, imagine if you tested with two pictures and one of the pictures made two sales, you would never made those sales if you didn't choose a picture as well. Leave the detailed targeting button on that on screen right there. Leave that button on. That button is actually making you a lot of money. A lot of people are telling you to uncheck this button, not leave it on. But honestly, Facebook is broad now. As it says in the next part here, Facebook is broad now. So go broad as well. You're going with a cold interest. You're going with cold targeting. You should just let Facebook do its job. Leave it broad. Keep the detailed targeting button on because that expansion is super powerful. And eventually, you know, later on in the scaling phase, which you start making $25 duplicates, you could try to turn it off. Obviously, it could work super well with it off too. But just split test it and keep it on when you're testing if you if you follow what I say. So what are you going to expect from a test, guys? I want to see two sales the first day. It doesn't have to be more crazy than that, but two sales the first day is a decent indicator. I really want to have more sales in the same ad sets. It will be really boring to see the scenario of four sales in completely different ad sets. I've seen it a couple of times. It's always sad to tell my students like, yo, we got a lot of sales, but they're all in different ad sets. I want to see the same ad set continue to make sales. So three sales in one ad set after 48 hours is my goal because that allows me to take the $10 ad set that's sitting at three sales and duplicate it to $25 a day. But I also want to see four sales after 48 hours in whatever ad set. It doesn't have to be in the same one, but I would like to see two sales in one ad set at least so I know that I can keep running it. But three sales in one ad set is the ideal goal. But if you are making some sales, leave it running another day. So if your product has one sale or less within the first 24 to 30 hours, let's say 30 hours, I would consider to kill the product. There's no point running the product if that's the result. Because keep in mind, guys, there's going to be another product out there that's just going to create way more money the first 30 hours. And there's going to be a product out there that's going to pop three sales in one ad set the first day. Obviously, be patient with your products. Do not get me wrong whatsoever. But I'm just saying, guys, like if it's not working out, move on to a new product. A lot of people usually just try to figure out what's wrong, start split testing a lot of stuff. But the truth is, guys, just get a new product and move on. And wow, guys, I got to say, since I flipped my position on the camera, this looks really good. Like the background here, this looks good. So hopefully you smash a thumbs up. Please click the like button, guys, and please subscribe to my channel if you would be so nice. I want to teach you guys how to find good interest, okay? Untap interest. Listen to this, guys. If you're running a dog product, and I might be repeating myself now, I'm not completely sure, but just listen up. If you're running a dog product, right, and it's a little bit saturated, or just running a dog product in general, it doesn't have to be saturated either. Keep in mind, everyone else in the dog niche are targeting the interest dog, dog love everything like that. So why would you target dogs when that is what everyone is doing? You never want to go by the masses. That is the number one thing I've learned this year. Don't go by the masses. It's the worst thing you can do, right? So if everyone is targeting the interest dogs, you should not target dogs, right? Because that means you will just go by the masses. The people interested in dogs on Facebook has already been spammed by ads, so it will not be an untapped market whatsoever. So I would instead try to figure out who is interested in dogs. I would target a dog food brand, for example, a brand that sells dog food because because you're kind of like targeting people that like dogs without really targeting them, even though you are targeting them. That sounds really weird. But the point is just don't target the super general interests. You can obviously put in like two general interests because you have seven ad sets, right? So I usually do like two ad sets that's really general, really basic interest. Then I do three ad sets that is related. Of course it is related, but it's kind of untapped. It's the ad sets that not everyone else would use. And then I always do two nonsense. As I said in a million times, guys, I used to target alcohol for a healthcare product and it worked every time. So I always tend to think outside the box when running a Facebook interest. And keep in mind, guys, if you have a good ad account, if your pixel is well optimized, you could target whatever interest and is most likely going to make sales. Let's talk about scaling, guys. Dude, when I started out, I just wanted someone to teach me scaling. It was the only thing I wanted, just to learn scaling. So I got a mentor, but sadly, I never learned me how to scale. So I had to figure it out myself, but at least I came up with my own unique e combo scaling strategy. So what I'm about to deliver to you guys now is priceless. It's worth a lot. I hope you guys get some value out of it, okay? So ads that spent over $20 with no sales should be cut. When to kill and scale ad sets, right? If it spends $20 or more, it should be cut if it's a $10 ad set. If it's a $25 ad set, it should not be cut at $20 because you got to give it the whole budget. So basically what I'm saying is if ad set spends double the budget or like 50% more than the budget, just a little bit more than the budget with no sales, cut it or if it's beloved break even raw ads. And keep this thing in mind, guys, there's not really a point cutting a product if some ads are profitable. Might as well just cut every ad set besides a profitable one and just keep making like $10 profit a day. Vertical scaling. That's how Facebook works now. Vertical, increasing budget. So if you make three sales in one ad set, you duplicate it 
always duplicate, always, always duplicate. And then you increase the budget. So three sales means duplicate the ad set, increase the budget. So that's from $10 to $25. But this does not count when you're going to duplicate from 25 to 30 to 40 to $50. The three sale rule only comes to play from the $10 ad set. If you want to duplicate 25 to $50 ad set, you should have like 10 to 20 sales. The higher you try to budget the ad set, the more likely it is going to fail, honestly, if you don't have a lot of sales. So the higher the budget, the more data. But three sales duplicate from $10 a day to $25. The $25 ad set sh should start popping off. It kind of is like a 50-50. But if you have multiple ad sets at three sales, it shouldn't be a 50-50 anymore. Also take your $10 ad set that has three sales, duplicate it and split test the detail targeting button. That button should be tested on and off because you might be doing way better off than what you think. But in the test, I do recommend you guys to always keep it on. The third thing you guys can do to, sp to test an ad set and try to get it to scale properly is to duplicate the ad set and just publish. You don't want to change anything. It's just horizontal scaling. Just duplicate the ad set and publish it. This allows you guys to reach new segments of the audience. So that is also another thing that I recommend you guys to do. In my opinion, you shouldn't test with CBOs. I know a lot of people that does it. Do not get me wrong. It might be super smart and you could also do it guys yourself, but I don't test with CBOs. I use CBOs for scaling. CBOs has always been a scaling thing for me. That's when I come in with the budget and I'm trying to crush it with the CBOs. So CBO is scaling and honestly just use regular campaigns for testing. In my opinion, lookalike audiences can be great as well, guys. I really do recommend you guys to run lookalike audiences, but get a hundred sales before you do it and realize they're not as powerful as they used to. Order new ads regularly, guys. You want to get new creatives at least like once a week or once every 10th day. Some of my friends even do it every fifth day. I usually get new creatives every Friday and then I split test them throughout the week. But the thing is, guys, the creatives will die out. And the customer psychology could be like, you know, the first time he sees it, he's not interested whatsoever. But if you keep pushing the guy the same product over and over again, the third time he's still not interested, the fifth time he clicks on it, but not interested. And then the 10th time he actually ends up purchasing, just gets more and more interesting every single time. And if you come with new content all the time, you're consistently beating your competitor and you're consistently showing something new for the product. So new content is king because if your product dies out, it's because you need new interest, new content, or if it's saturated. So always get new content. These are scary things that could happen guys when you're drop shipping. Keep an eye on this. This is super important. First of all, you need to know your supplier. Your supplier could do a lot of stuff that would be super harmful to your business later on if you don't know your supplier. Trust me guys, the supplier has been really bad for me a couple of times and I really lost a ton of money using the wrong suppliers or not being in touch with my suppliers or honestly feeling a little bit scammed. So be careful with them. The scary thing that can happen guys is let's just say that you're selling a product for $25. You buy this product for $2. What are you going to do if you go to sleep at 10 p.m. and then at 5 a.m. when you're still asleep, the product cost is now $20 and you keep selling the whole night. Imagine that like selling the whole night, you sell, let's just say 200 products in your sleep when the suppliers increase the price like way, way more. You're losing product for every sale. So what if the supplier raises the price drastically without you knowing, right? It can harm you so much and you can lose so much. So make sure that you guys know your supplier or you could end up losing money. Feedback score on Facebook is super important. I want to talk about it again. I talked about it on the channel in previous videos, but the feedback score system on Facebook is super important. The feedback score system is that when your customer buys something, he will leave a survey for Facebook. Facebook will ask about the customer experience and they will rate the customer experience. If you have a feedback score that's under two, your ads will get no reach, your ads will perform poorly and you will never find a winning product or you will just end up getting banned. So that's why customer support is so important. Customer satisfaction. Long shipping time, set up quicker if you can, but you don't have to set up quick shipping in the beginning, okay? So source from Ali, but once you start making like five sales a day, you should get in touch with the supplier really quick because you need to ship out your product way faster because the customer could charge back. And I'll tell you guys, never try to win a chargeback. A chargeback is so harmful that if you ever get in a chargeback, just say, here is your refund. You never want to argue in a chargeback. It's so harmful for your account. So never let it even lead to a chargeback. You don't want a dispute to be open. You don't want a chargeback. So if the shipping times is the problem, fix it and never scale high before you figure out shipping. Figure out shipping before you scale or you will run into really big problems. So we don't want that, right? Watch the shipping price increases because that's another thing that the supplier could do. He can increase the shipping price. So this is something you might not see, right? Usually the shipping costs $2, but now it costs 15. Well, you really have a problem now. Can you deliver to all countries something you also need to figure out? Like at least if you're scaling big. If you're making a ton of sales to Egypt and you can't ship there, you will lose a lot by refunding your customers. You just figure out, guys, if you have a country that always buys, like let's just say all your sales are coming from Egypt, check early if you can ship there. Just figure it out. And if not, those countries should be excluded, but only if you're making sales to them. There's no point excluding a country that will not make sales unless they take up all the traffic. Get a team, guys. Get virtual assistant to fill out orders. If you want to get in touch with a VA, a virtual 
assistant, someone that could ship out your orders, take care of the customer support, go to AliExpress Dropshipping Club on Facebook. It's a Facebook group that I've been using. I'm not promoting it or anything. I don't know anything about the group, but I just know that I usually post there. Say like, hey, I need a supplier uh, that could ship out my orders. And then I'll wake up with 50 messages in my inbox. So just use that to find a VA. And then no customer support is bad. You never want that. It's the worst thing that could ever happen. Customer satisfaction over everything else. You don't need to build a brand. Some people honestly just think that if you're a brand, you need to care about customer support. If you're only drop shipping and it's not branded, you don't need to care about it. But listen, guys, the customer can really destroy your feedback score and then you'll be out of business forever. The wrong ways of drop shipping, guys, running super saturated products, you will waste so much money. You will just be in the loop forever. Test and test and test. That's why people test 60 products and they come to me and they want help. And like I've tested 60 products and like, how are you not successful after testing 60? Well, they only been testing saturated products and they never even changed up the strategy. Not split testing creatives is also another thing. You guys need to split test creatives, get in a lot of pictures, video ads, everything like that. It's super important to split test that. Not spending time researching the market beforehand. You want to know if the product that you're selling has a lot of competitors. If it has, well, it kind of is saturated. Just research the market, figure out the prices. Does this product have any value? Is it selling like crazy on Amazon already? Is it in Walmart? Then you should obviously not sell it, but just check the market up beforehand. See if the product is trending, right? See if it, like, let's just say it had 20 sales yesterday. Today it has 50 and then it goes to 100. You could catch a trend early. Stealing content is something you should never do. Never ever steal content, never. Like if you steal content, you'll get banned. If you don't get banned, you will have no reach on your ads. Your ads will not be prioritized by Facebook. They will not send your ads to any qualified customers. So just don't steal content because the thing is, it's only gonna work for the content owner. Facebook will know you're stealing it. You will hurt your account. You will hurt your feedback score too. It's super bad for feedback system. That's also one of the things that gets your feedback score to drop. So never steal content. It's not going to work. You need to be original. Being in the beginner niches is also a big problem like dogs, pets uh, it could work of course it could always work and keep in mind guys everything i say that is bad could work but your chances is lower don't be in the beginning of niches such as dogs babies projectors cameras just couple of ones I had on mine here. And then ripping people off is kind of the same as stealing content. Don't steal the description. Just don't steal anything. And guys, keep in mind, Facebook scans your website. If you have before and after picture on your website, you can be harmed by it. Chances are really low though. Over promising guys is the worst thing you can do. You never want to run up an ad and say like, get your hair back today for to a bold person. That is also hurting your feedback score. John and I did a video on it on my channel. You guys should actually watch it. My feedback score video posted with John. He's an expert on the Facebook system, the back end of Facebook. That will really, really hurt your feedback score and feedback score needs to be taken seriously is probably the most important thing to learn about Facebook ads is the feedback score. So don't rip people off. Never over promise. It's super important. Like you never, never like rather under promise. They will buy it if they like it and mixing strategies. You don't want to take my strategy on scaling when it comes to Facebook ads and you and use someone else's strategy as well. Don't combine strategies. It is a bad idea. I used to do it all the time. And please like and subscribe guys. The mindset of a successful dropshipping guys. I want to talk about this. Okay. If my successful dropshipping never gives up a successful dropshipping, you know, he might be testing 10 products and he might fail and nothing seems to work. And he's starting to question like, is dropshipping a scam? Is it not working? Is dropshipping dead? No, it's not. But there's a lot of beginners in dropshipping that tells you dropshipping is dead, that tells you dropshipping doesn't work because they tested one product, they failed. Keep in mind, the words of that dropshipping is not working. It's only spread by people who doesn't do dropshipping. Someone was asking me about some shipping question and said like, why are you dropshipping now? Blah, 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 blah. And then I figured out he's never made a sale. So the thing is, these words are coming from people that doesn't know anything about dropshipping. It's obviously working, but a dropshipper never gives up, right? Successful dropshipping. He knows and he realized that it will be hard. It will be a lot of nights where he just makes the description over and over again. That description will have to be be made over again, going back, looking for products, wasting his money sometimes. I mean, you, hopefully you won't have to waste too much money because you should know what you're doing to a certain degree, but it will always be a little bit random at some parts too. But he keeps going guys. Like if he tests five products and they all fail, he's out of money. He figured out how to make more money. He doesn't set aside $500 and quit when he's lost the 500. No guys, he keeps reinvesting. He keeps focusing on his dream because listen, the people that stays on it will always make it work. I bet it on myself when I started. Nobody believed in me whatsoever. I tested all the products. Everyone talked about me losing money on Facebook every single day and said it was obviously not working and that, you know, people were just selling the dream. But listen, guys, I didn't care, dude. I didn't hear the voices. I just stayed focused on my craft and stopped talking about it. And I just kept pushing through. So no matter what happens, guys, if you're losing money in dropshipping, whatever happens, if there's setbacks, if there's a Facebook ban, don't let that get you down. If you're banned on Facebook, use your friend's account. Just never give up, guys. It's all about that. If you stay consistent, if you never give 
give up and if you don't let it get to your emotions, never become emotional about products, you will win. It takes some products. It's not an overnight success. But the thing is, it is an overnight success. Because listen, it's an overnight success once you hit a winner. But it takes a lot of nights to hit that winner. How can you lose it all, guys? Don't spend money. Don't spend your profits before you know that your product has arrived. Like, let's just say a customer pays me. I will not spend my profits before it's been like 20 to 30 days. Because I want to make sure that this sale has gone through. There won't be any chargeback. There won't be any issues. But never spend your profits before you for sure know that your customer has gotten the product and opened it. Shipping out price without tracking codes is bad. Because, you know, the customer might just get cold feet and just return the product. But just always show them, you know, your product is on its way. Stay patient with us here. We're sorry if it's taking time. And just have tracking codes. And the thing as well is you want to have tracking codes. Because PayPal is going to ask for tracking codes when they give you a hold. Hold is something you will have on PayPal. You will have way less on Stripe. I had one hold on Stripe so far. And it was super easy. But PayPal held my money for five months. But you just got to deal with it. Give the tracking codes. And whenever they ask for something, give what they ask for. Not knowing your supplier. I talked about that. Too long shipping times in the scaling phase. When you scale, you want to have quick shipping. Because if not, there could be returns. And you could just lose all your money. You never want to scale without having free shipping. And I kind of feel like that's an obvious part. Legal issues. We also talked about this. We also talked about racing supply prices, copyrights, like selling a Marvel product, for example, it is copyrighted. Hiring the wrong team, you never want to do that. I once hired a guy to ship out orders and it didn't ship out any orders. I th really thought it would ship out orders, but I didn't pay attention. So I was just selling without shipping out orders for a week. All of them got returned and I was like, oh, I got the wrong team. Make sure you guys have a team that's motivated, right? Make sure the team is winning. You guys need to realize it's not a win if not the whole team is winning. Facebook bans, guys. It's a big problem. But if you get banned on Facebook, you just honestly just need to move on to another account. Use your friends or something. Product quality issues and not testing it out. Many returns. Like if you don't have a product with high quality, you will get returns. Quality is everything. So honestly, I recommend you guys to order the product yourself and just try it out to just make sure the quality is decent. You don't have to have the craziest quality, but just keep in mind, guys, quality is king. You don't want to have super bad quality, but at the same time, they can't expect like, you know, designer quality, but never sell something bad, okay? You're dealing with real people. Dropshipping isn't just a money printing game. You're actually running a real business. But how do you succeed over and over again? This is why I love dropshipping because I keep having repeatedly success with it. Many people succeed once, right? They'll make 100K to 500K and stop seeing results. Then they will come to me and join the coaching and we'll figure out why. So what basically happens is these guys usually not back up their pixel or they're in a niche where they can't really scale. That is the problem. Like they can't move on. If you're in a niche that is hot right now, like a one hit wonder type of niche, obviously the niche might die out, right? Let's just say Among Us. If you're in the Among Us niche, which is copyrighted and so don't run it. But if you're in the Among Us niche, obviously you could make like 200 k now, but this Among Us popular in a year? Maybe not. Then you will be back to zero. But if you also don't back up your pixel, you don't back up your data, you will be back to zero when the product dies out or if you get banned. So always back it up, guys. Be an admin of multiple people's business managers, like your friends, families. Just ask them to set up a business manager. It doesn't cost anything. It just be an admin on their account to not get banned completely. Because the thing is, if you get banned, then you can store your pixel on their account, right? So I'll take my pixel, store it on my friend's account because I'm admin admin on my friend's business manager. So I'll keep my pixel there as a backup so that if I get banned, I could just move on to my friend's business manager and run ads from his. A business manager can hold five ad accounts. So every time I use a friend's business manager, I have five ad accounts on that business manager in most cases, unless Facebook does some weird bans, so it just makes you move on. You also need to change your IP, obviously, if you're doing that. Change your cards, change your domains. If you get banned, just change everything that could be traced to you. But just be on other people's business managers. Just be admin of them. Something I learned way too late in my process but it really helped. When you get banned, move to your friends, as I said. Have a verified business manager, guys. If you don't have verified business manager, you will just get banned randomly for no reason. And you will be like, why did I get banned? Either it's the feedback score or it's that you have, don't have a verified business manager. So get your papers, verify your business manager. It might take a couple of days, but it's always worth it. Verified business manager sell for like 500 to $600. So obviously it is valuable. It helps you avoid the bans and it just makes you seem legit to Facebook. So always verify it. Watch your feedback score. Never let it drop below two. It can't be under two, but just don't let it drop too much. Anyways, I would have it as high as I can, of course. Back up all data and use lookalikes to test new products. That's how I succeed over again, honestly. Because if my blackhead remover is working, I sell a blackhead remover, it's dying out. I can use my lookalike audience, my email list, my data, and my pixel to run up an acne remover because the acne remover and a blackhead remover most likely has kind of like the same audience, right? So that is how I keep having repeatedly success with dropshipping because I run the same niches over and over again, utilizing my data. Quick little case study here on how I had a 72% profit margin on a forty to $60,000 a month product. I was running a mold remover, right? And the thing is, I found this product when it was untapped. That is why it worked, right? The mold remover became one of the most trendy products last year. I was running it the year beforehand. I found it. I just found it to be super cool because I've seen 
action movers. I've seen black hit removers. I've seen calories removers, but I've never seen a cool mole remover. So mole remover, I know some people are not confident with their moles. So I was selling confidence, guys, right? Someone is out in the city. They feel like they're the ugly one in the friend group and I can sell them confidence in their own skin. I can just sell them the experience where they won't feel like the ugly one anymore. And you're obviously not ugly to have it, right? Don't get me wrong, but people will think that. So selling confidence, always the best thing you guys can do. But the product was a Facebook headache because it was in the skincare niche. It could look over promising or just show ugly skin in general to Facebook that people don't want to have in their face when they scroll down the feed. So it's kind of an on and off product. Like I kept getting banned one day and then the other day it worked and then was banned and worked and banned and worked. So it's just running the product on and off. I was also using Unchapped Interest and I told you guys earlier how I find them. So I was using Interest such as Kylie Jenner, right? Everyone would target natural skincare, skincare dermatology, but don't realize that you could just target Kylie Jenner instead because that is not a generic interest. If everyone targets skincare, I would rather target her because if you engage with her, you most likely engage with skincare. Transition your store to a brand. This is the next section of this free course, free training, whatever you guys want to call it or whatever I call it. Two to three months, guys, into a winning product that's doing like 100K to 200K to 300K a month might be time to brand it because like if you brand a product, you could price it more. That's just one of the good sides about branding. But like Ray-Ban sunglasses, would they sell as good as they sell if it wasn't brand, right? The power of branding when it comes to Starbucks, for example, is coffee. $7 coffee versus $1 coffee. Obviously, I'm sure it's quality on it, I guess, but you guys know branding is everything, right? So if you get into that position, you should probably consider branding unless you want to be a dropshipper, which is totally okay. A dropshipper just get a product, scales it, move on, because that's what I've been doing a lot, actually. I've been scaling products up to like 250k a month. Then I've been just running it for like two, three, four, five, six months, and then moving on, running up another product. It's always been my style, and it's super profitable. Don't get me wrong, it's a really good way to make a lot of money. But if you want to take the store to the next level, that specific store with that product, you could consider branding. So order inventory, guys. Work with suppliers. You need to get agents. You need to get in China. You need to get a warehouse. And yes, guys, I said you need to get in China. That obviously doesn't mean you need to fly to China. But you need to get a warehouse, guys. And I have friends that have warehouses all over the United States, in Ohio, Las Vegas. Yeah, there's been warehouses a lot of places. But if you have a warehouse, you can ship out way faster. You can work there. And besides that, it really is cool to have a warehouse as well, feeling like you run an actual business. But those are the things you guys are going to need when you brand. And I'm not a branding expert. I have been branding products. I have been making a lot of money but most of it has been through drop shipping faster shipping needs to be figured out if you have a warehouse chances are you can ship away faster from your warehouse so that's obviously one of the best things about having it so my friends they're really high in the game they've been having a one day to two day ship out at this point which big brands are having like if i were to buy a hoodie in norway the brands will ship it out the same day honestly guys a couple of times i've been ordering some clothes and i got it the same day so this so these are the guys you're competing with obviously you know selling different products there's not really competition but what i'm saying is like brands are going hard right now design your store branded guys you need to design your store branded name the product brand and just have the brand just make it seem like a brand it could be the color scheme it could be the layout of it and just you know telling a story like the brand the story of the brand just selling a story selling confidence just selling something real selling an experience right just make it seem branded i was running the mole remover as i talked to you guys about i branded it with molex i named the store molex.com the product was called molex genius way of branding honestly and really simple right but it just seems way more branded way more personal i guess when you like name it molex.com instead of you know just uh, uh, product store dot my dot com it does sound weird do you guys get it like you know general store sure guys but like brand the product name right if you brand the name of the product you're all already like 10 steps ahead customer satisfaction first guys when you're building a your brand you need to focus on customer satisfaction customer is everything right so if you're building a your brand be nice to the customer guys just do everything you guys can to make the customer happy even if that's refunding another thing about a brand guys is like people would actually come back when it's black friday you could send out a mail to all of the people following your brand like yo we have a deal now we have something new in stock like they might actually come back so that is one of the powerful things about a brand as well the other good thing about brands is they are good to go long term if you guys want to learn a lot about brands you guys should check out like yang gibbs channel for example he's killing it with brands you guys can check out him i know he's been killing it i'm not really branding too much the good thing about a brand though like a long-term brand is you could sell it a big exit you could sell a brand for like five million or more you know us dollars movement watches i think it started as a drop shipping store and they sold it for over 100 million if i'm not mistaken that is the power of branding guys like you could exit be set for life buy your dream car buy, buy a private jet maybe to some extent i would never but you guys know what i mean like setting up something like a big brand is really good because you could go for a big exit that's not my goal my goals are different i want to put the money some other places i will keep that personal what i want to do on how i want to get there but you guys will see and um, branding is a genius way to go
brands have an easier time getting returning customers, as I said earlier, but this is kind of obvious, I feel like. Customer satisfaction, how to lose, always refund if they ask. Never let a refund question turn into a dispute. Chargebacks are super harmful no matter what you do if you lose or win them. I already talked about this, right? Customer leave a survey on Facebook feedback system. I know this is getting repetitive and I just realized when I made this, I'm sorry. I'm trying to keep this as good as I can, but this is super important anyways. Feedback score under two ruins your business. Payment provider bans if they have a payment provider will ban you if you have a certain percentage of chargebacks, um, which can be a tiny bit high. So if I have a 3% chargeback on Stripe, I might get banned. I don't know what the percentage is because I've actually never had a high percentage, but I know that there are some percentages that will get you banned and blacklisted on some of these payment providers to so never have a high percent. That's why I'm saying refund because if the dispute even gets open, that will count as a percent, right? And if one out of a hundred is a chargeback, that is 1%. So if five out of a hundred is a chargeback, you're in trouble. The lower the feedback score, the worse the ad performance. You never find a winner with a low feedback score. So as I said earlier, guys, drop shipping is one of the best businesses to be in. It's one of the best entry businesses too, to make your first money, to get to the point where you feel like you actually have some money, you can do whatever you want. Drop shipping is the financial free business. And eventually once you've done that, you look into branding, you look into whatever guys, like making an agency, a marketing team, you know, it could be whatever guys, but drop shipping could be the entry. Stick to it guys. Remember all the points of this presentation. I hope you guys like this. The three last steps guys is going to be one, to like the video, to subscribe to the channel and comment your takeaway and goals. What is the best thing you guys learned off of this video? I really don't know. I'm not gonna dry this out any longer. You can DM me on Instagram if you have any questions. My Instagram is there, ecombossy. Or just follow guys because I post a lot of cool dropshipping stuff. So if you guys need any help, you could always check it out and see the stories, I guess. I don't know. And stay tuned guys, video uploads every other day. It's going to be a new video on Shopify apps, how to use them. Also a video on my second channel, which is linked in the description on how I made my first $10,000 a month online. It was ages ago, super cool. So my second channel is there. I have a course there and there's coming more videos on the channel. Super cool, guys. I appreciate you. Smash the like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.